This is First Trades. Let's put the spotlight on LNT Finance, talk a little bit about the synergies from the MSME segment and more importantly, their long-term growth targets and how they will be achieved. So Dipta Roy is the MD and CEO now joining in. Thank you so much for taking time out. And Mr. Roy, it's been six months since you've taken the helm at LNT Finance. What have they been like for you? What has changed for the company in terms of the strategy and what stays the same? I think what has uh, been very, very encouraging is that we've been able to sort of in the last quarter maintain the disbursement momentum and sort of uh, keep the same focus on in this quarter as well. So overall, in terms of our focus on our products, uh, the deepening of our customer penetration as well as deepening of our new markets has all sort of progressed uh, to our satisfaction. So in a way, on the product side, on the technology side, we have done a lot of new things. On our disbursement side, as well as our business momentum side, I think we have continued the strong trajectory that we have exhibited over the past uh, a couple of quarters. So that has not changed. Over and over, and over above, you know, I complete six months from the time that I have taken over, and it has been a very satisfactory and a learning six months. Right. Let's also talk about your Lakshya 2026 goals as well, because you were aiming for that 95% uh, realization, and uh, you're already at that point two years ahead of time. Would this then, uh, uh, you know, indicate, and would it be safe to say that the impact on AUMs and credit growth from the unwinding of the corporate uh, book is now behind us? Yeah, I would say the impact on uh, credit growth as well as AUM growth from unwinding of the corporate side of the business is probably uh, almost done. Though there's a small portion of the corporate book which is uh, still left out, which you know, which we are in a no hurry to pair off because that is mostly standard assets, income generating assets, and you know we are not in a hurry to pair off. Only if we get the right valuation, we'll pair the of those assets, or we'll let those assets run the sort of the course of their amortization schedule. Uh, but yes, you know, uh, given the fact that your at the end of last quarter we had about a five and a half thousand crores of wholesale AUM uh, left. Uh, the wholesale AUM is now a minuscule portion of our overall AUMs, and this quarter uh, the growth on the retail side, especially in the growth of the overall AUMs, was visible last quarter. This quarter, I, we are hoping that it will be visible uh, more. So yes, the transformation of LNT Finance uh, from a wholesale slash rural NBFC to a diversified retail NBFC which is strongly present both in the rural and the urban sector is almost on the last stretches of completion and over the next couple of quarters the proportion of our wholesale book will even go even smaller. Right, uh, Sudipto, what kind of growth CAGR are you penciling in for your retail end of the AUM growth for the next three years? So as per our luxury strategy, we had guided that we would uh, target at 25% CAGR. Uh, our growth trajectory actually has been much stronger than that. We have been running at about 30% plus. However, for terms of long-term guidance, you know, we will remain guided by what we have taken in our luxury plan, which is 25% CAGR, and we'll try to hit those numbers. Right. I also want to, uh, you know, shift focus and talk about the rural space, you know, because your rural group loans and microfinance loans made up for roughly about 38% of your total disbursements and about 29% of your total book as of Q4, the previous uh, financial year. With India uh, under Modi 3.0 and a healthy monsoon forecast as well, what is your growth outlook for the rural segment, especially farmer finance, MFI and tractors? Yes, yeah, you have to understand that for the rural economy, you know, one of the most important factors that determines demand in the rural economy is the monsoons and the sort of the trajectory of the monsoons and the depth of the monsoons. Now, as you know, last year was a year of very sluggish monsoons and that had an impact on our tractor business. Uh, this year, uh, so far, southern part of the country and, and largely the western part of the country has received sort of normal rainfall so far, though there is some delay in onset of proper monsoons in the northern part of the country. Uh, we are hopeful that over the next couple of weeks, even the southwest monsoon will cover the northern parts of the country. We are currently deficient as of now. And if you have a normal monsoon, I think it will have a good impact on overall tractor sales this year. In fact, in the southern part of the country, we are already seeing a revival of demand in the tractor sales. Uh, also, as rains happen, you know, the consumption uh, in rural areas is also sustained by good monsoon. 
and because the new government is in place and the budget is around the corner we expect that you know there will be more initiatives for the farm sector as a rural sector with focus on boosting sort of rural slash farm income and uh, we are hopeful that with those inputs from the government as well as from a proper monsoon uh, we are hoping that uh, the year will be uh, positive one large impact area or one large marker is two wheeler demand you know two wheeler demand we saw a good uptake post diwali last year and the uh, sort of the positive uptick has continued Right, morning. And now the home loans have made up roughly 17% of the Q4 disbursements with the expansion of the PMAY to 3 crores more than uh, uh, urban and rural households. Now, how do you see this uh, segment shaping up for FY25? We would like to point out that, you know, we as an organization, we're not present in the affordable housing segment. So our focus is more prime and near prime. You know, our average ticket size of a home loan disbursement is about 70 lakh. Rupees. We have also a very strong presence in the loan against property market as well. Uh, however, given the fact that post-COVID there has been a lot of end user demand in quality homes and the sort of the developer inventory of homes is probably in many of the major cities is probably a three or four year low. Uh, so we are very seeing very strong uh, robust end user demand uh, on the home loans part. And because of our focused uh, sort of uh, approach in reinterpreting the home loan product, uh, through our complete home loans uh, uh, launch. Uh, we are seeing very good acceptance and demand from the customers, especially the home decor finance uh, sort of feature of our, the complete home loan is also seeing a very strong interest from our customers as well as the developer community. So we're very hopeful that going forward with the differentiated home loan proposition and the strong endings in demand that we are seeing uh, in the market, we will be able to uh, register uh, strong growth rates in our home loan disbursements. Gita, you've been uh, cautious on provisions in the fourth quarter, fourth quarter and also are building in a buffer of almost 930 crore this also, and this also impacted your profitability to a certain extent in this quarter gone by. Is the company sufficiently protected from contingencies uh, on your planning or are you planning to add to provision buffer going ahead? So the last quarter we took a couple of uh, uh, the couple of actions. If obviously the first action was that we created a prudential provision or a floating provision buffer of about 720 crores odd against our SR portfolio. Uh, that was sort of to sort of uh, sort of ring fence the the normal performance of the company from any haircuts that might come from the SR portfolio. Though we genuinely do not expect that we will be, we'll need to dip into those floating provisions, but that was to create a peace of mind and, and make sure that our normal performance going forward is not impacted by any leakages or haircuts that might come from the SR portfolio. In fact, as I have said in the analyst call, you know, the pathways to resolution of many of our SR assets are visible. Construction has started in many of those projects and we have visibility of completion of those projects. So we really do not expect to dip into uh, the sort of the floating pool provisions that we have kept. We also have about 980 crores of provisions which we have kept against our microfinance assets as well. Uh, so going forward, uh, I, I do believe that, you know, we will have a consistent and a sustained track record of profitability going forward. Right. So give us a rough idea of what is it that we can expect in the first quarter. And, you know, since we're almost at the end of the quarter now, how the quarter has been, especially on the back of elections. So the first quarter is very important in any BFSI uh, company as well, uh, and 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 so we set ourselves certain goals for the first quarter, uh, for the overall business uh, for matrix, and as, as as we are nearing the end of the quarter, I would say that we are reasonably satisfied. The team is reasonably satisfied that most of those metrics will be met. So, uh, so uh, the quarter is not out yet. Uh, it's not, but but we are towards the end of the quarter, and we think that. Uh, many of the metrics that we had set ourselves to achieve uh, will be achieved. And what are your net interest margins, ROA and ROE projections for FY25? So FY25, you know, as I said, you know, uh, we have said that we remain sort of guided by our Laksha goals. Our overall exit FY26 sort of, so our NIMS and fees overall has been about about, uh, about 11% plus, right? Uh, and, and, and the fact is that We'll try to sort of uh, sort of be near to that trajectory, and as per the Laksha guidance, you know we had uh, given a guidance of about 2.8 to you know 3 percent ROA exit FI26. So obviously there is a runway there. Last quarter we were at about 2.32. 
uh, uh, after the provisions, but if you look at before the provisions, you know, we are about 2.6 percent out. And uh, we are hopeful that we will be during the course of the year, we will be able to show uh, a degree of improvement from whatever uh, we were there at the end of last, last year. But obviously, the final target is to hit that 2.8 to 3 percent ROA exit FI26 as enumerated by our Lakshya plan. Right, Sudipta, great to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for taking the time and speaking with us. In fact, let me now welcome on board.